two artifacts have been set into their place. I genuinely at first didn't realize this. But this is a confirmation that this game's creations aren't a fake. Even after trying to snap out of the thought it stayed the same. There is definitely something up with the game. Even then. I still want to complete this story. One last world for today couldn't be so bad right? Carapusa. The world's board is actually much bigger than Errol Ferro. Although it did take some image editing to figure us out. But anyways, the music kind of similar to the Infovec theme. But more upbeat, giving the feeling of a new world being discovered. Hearing this music actually has gotten me excited. The levels consist of heat fields, warm bond, flame home, factory, and thermal facility. With the excitement getting to me, I sent Red to the first level, and started the adventure in the heat fields. Which is pretty much what the title said it was. No further explanation is needed. The music is a sort of theme that I would refer to as orchestral, with exclusion of vocals in the music. This is the point of the game where I'm starting to feel something. It doesn't bother me too much. But I do have this off feeling of been watched. The first type of fauna I encounter is this turtle looking creature, with a crest on its head. They aren't very dangerous. In fact they are quite friendly grazing animals. Now instead the predators are cats with fangs. I luckily encountered only two of them. And also luckily they are repelled by one hit. A third fauna type I found was a yellow armadillo creature. Just like the turtles it is very docile. Only attacking when threatened. It's quite interesting to go from Merlferum. Which was a cold climate full of mostly cold blooded animals. To Karapusa. Which is a warm climate with warm blooded animals. It's not a bad thing at all though. More so the least of my worries. A simple half a minute goes by with nothing new. Until I end up at an open area with no trees. There is also some weird. Green. Mosquito looking creature. Who is just standing there. I refuse to do such a command. Very good choice of the last words. Finish me. And suddenly I'm on the back of this giant serpent. The colossal worm. Since it moves on its own, you'll see the mountains change on each image. As intense as it may seem, the worm isn't that much of a threat. The big problem comes from the enemies that have managed to get on its back. Their weapons have an insane range. But I am at least lucky to be able to chase them down. There isn't much else to the colossal worm's tail to main body. It is just the continuous waves of enemies. So I'll just skip ahead to the head. On the Colossal Worm's head is the real boss fight. General Stab. Who might have to be the most difficult normal boss this far. His left arm is obviously normal. But his right hand shoots strong plasma bullets. Which is already enough of a problem. But worse still. General Stab will sometimes jump and pound down on the worm's head. Which causes it to move up and down in a zigzag pattern. Rising waves of its own body. If Red couldn't jump. Let alone fly. Then this would have been even more difficult. Three minutes of the battle goes by until General Stab is finished. With one hit I forced him into the jaws of the worm. I felt glad. Afterwards. The colossal worm stops and then proceeds to go back underground. After that I meet this. Cyclops. No idea who this is. Hello there, Jeffrey. You someone from another world? I am from another planet. Galactica. Nice to be meeting you. I suppose you're here to get rid of that threat too. We have gotten prepared for this moment. Those enemies shall be held back till we must fight. Now, let's go and teach him a thing or two.
And so, up comes the second playable character to be unlocked. Kloptika. So before I start talking about the next level, I'm gonna talk about Kloptika's moveset. Starting off is an ability that Kloptika has. While he isn't fast like Skitch, he can stick to the ceiling. Much like that of a gecko. Another ability he has is something to do with his hitbox. If he lands on top of an enemy, when he isn't upside down, he'll do some damage to the enemy. The reason to his bottom sprite weapon is unknown. But anyways, Kloptika's melee attack is a sort of swing ability, where he attacks his enemy by assaulting them with his arms. Or legs. Again. No idea. His ranged attack is a flame ball. Unfortunately it doesn't hit very hard. It's sort of like Mothra's eye attack. But instead it at least is a wider bullet range. Another upside is that you can aim your ranged attack in any direction. Which actually makes it a ton better. Now that all of Kloptika's special abilities are uncovered. It's time to move on to the pond. Warm pond is actually multiple lakes. Technically a whole swamp. The music is an upbeat theme that sounds very cool. I don't really have much else to say for now. 20 seconds in. And fauna. In the form of a crocodile. A lot of these can be found here. Laying around or swimming are common. Along with them another creature. A small purple dinosaur. I think it might be a reference to something. There is only at least one enemy type. These green birds jump out of the water. And attack whatever they leave at. They are very hard to get rid of nonetheless I do that exact thing. One last fauna type was actually a fish similar to a salmon. I didn't manage to get an image of it. Maybe next time if I'm lucky. But for now concludes the warm font. Next up is to deal with the first enemy monster. The first enemy monster is a giant stone golem named Quadratus, who is by far one of the slowest monsters in this gameplay. Despite its low pacing mobility it's still quite strong. It is the third enemy to lack any ranged attacks. But it makes up with the ability to turn its eyes orange and start rampaging at you. Quadratus is also by far one of the most durable monsters. Unless you hit it in the head or tail. Your attacks won't remove any health. When the vital spot is attacked. A black substance will start gushing out. I suppose it is its blood. Not much else to say anymore. Only one last thing about these monster fights. They don't fight until they lose all health anymore. Instead they stop fighting at one life bar. So instead of sinking to the bottom and exploding. They will mostly just walk. Swim. Or fly off to the left. So therefore. The Retosaurus. Crippletron. And the Santa Wakwa monster. All just move along. There is an exception with Perfect Chaos. Who unlike everyone else. Submerges. Quadratus instead does the former and walks off. I wonder what does happen to them after they walk off. I'll just save the questions for after the world is complete. Factory. Which is, as far as I'm concerned, a type of facility. The music is a very ominous but also cool sounding theme. Though it's sort of drowned out with an overlapping sound of gears grinding and machinery. The only creature category here is, as far as I'm concerned, enemies only. Nothing else. And the first wave is already enough to keep me off of their back. I though won't be giving up this easily. So I slash through each and every enemy in sight. Robots aren't the only enemies here. There are organic ones. Like this snake. And some kind of silverfish creature. I then noticed a water tank. With some kind of phoenix in it. So acting on impulse I slash the tank open. Freeing the firebird. And flooding the enemies. As I go through the level. Some old enemies return. I only took a screenshot of one. It is a giant grasshopper. Behind it is some kind of chain attached eye. Most likely a camera. And some kind of robot. I suppose it has some type of mecha Godzilla. But it doesn't look like any mecha Godzilla I've seen. There are only six types of mecha Godzillas in the Godzilla films and shows. Probably more than that if you include references in other films. But this mecha Godzilla doesn't seem like any of them. Maybe someone out there would recognize it. But anyways I decided to kill it too. 20 seconds later and I see some robot being built. Connected to it is a tank full of water. With a head floating inside. Hold on is that. Not General Stab. He should be dead. Damn it, that this train. I have this train. Don't worry, Stab. Don't 
take this guy out instead. Well, I guess I'm not gonna fight General Stab right now. Instead I'm fighting this guy, Tilahika. General Stab may have been very hard to beat, but Tilahika is worse. To start off, he tanks the hits like they're almost nothing. As for his attacks, a slash attack, some kind of hand bullet. The hand bullet does pull back any punches. This is the kind of enemy that wants you dead as soon as he sees you. It took three minutes, but nonetheless, I don't kill him. But at least he stops attacking. You may have survived the day, but mark my words, I will return. Hi, so just gonna just gonna get this. The second to last stage is thermal facility which is what the title says. In the background is a massive sea of lava, and in the center is a massive structure. I bet the artifact is in there. The music, if that's how it should be considered, is a deep whirring sound. This place alone gives off a massive vibe of tension. The enemies are mainly just the same drones from before. Just one or more every now and then. So I'll skip to the interesting new stuff. Eventually I get to a bridge with a chain attached. And eventually, it came. After that, these two massive walls cage us inside. Dragaluges doesn't seem like the other enemies. Its main attacks consist of a scratch and a bite. It's definitely not too difficult. I then decide to speed things up a notch, by shooting at the chain, and as I expected, the bridge falls, bringing the drag Eleugis with it. But something's wrong. Surely it wasn't over yet. And well enough, this happened. And then the drag Eleugis emerges once again. Now in a skeletal form. And now it has a new ability in the form of a very powerful fire breath. When it does this, its heart exposes, which only allows some hits in. After a while of the fire breath being used, its body turns to a normal white, after which it submerges temporarily to recharge. It's proving to be quite a challenge. Two minutes later and... The Dragelugus has finally been slain, with the assistance of Magmarin. I suppose he must have been stolen and taken here. Anyways, after defeating the Dragelugus, Magmarin decides to form some sort of cocoon. Surely he's gonna come back. Although it'll take a while. But now that stage is complete, time to fight the next enemy monster. Before I get to the second boss monster, I just want to say because I forgot. That the music used for Quadratus was Mojura and Baragon's theme. And while I'm at it, I'll say that this next challenger uses the Mecha Godzilla theme. This atomic reptile, named Tagara. In battle, he's essentially like fighting Godzilla, except much harder. Like Godzilla, he has the punch and tail whip, but Tagara is able to extend spike blades from his arms, which have an increased attack range. He also has an atomic breath. But this particular breath is green. And also slows you down. But instead of the kick ability, Tagara can leap forward and extend multiple spikes close to his chest and stomach. It's mainly easy enough to just sick him with ranged attacks. And only use melee when his back is turned. Luckily he is easily beaten. This now just leaves the last stage. And an artifact battle after. The flame home is essentially or practically the same thing as Ice Town. The main differences are that Flame Home is not in a cave, and is not cold like the Ice Town. And there is different music, in which still gives off a happy tone like before. There isn't much about the stage itself, it's kind of just the continuous sight of a town full of humble citizens. So I'll just quickly get to the point. Like before, 
we end up at the end of the stage, which shows what I suppose is Kloptika's home, or perhaps a hideout. I actually happen to have something on my knee. We'll be going out at the enemy soon. We just need to wait until everyone else is ready. That's understandable. I think I'll take this moment to have a break. We're all ready now. Well, it looks like all of that previous weaponry wasn't enough. We've also got another new guy, you? I also like <laughs> Again, I am not good. Perhaps not, but your new opponent certainly is. It's not like the previous two. This one is even better. To make a long story short, it's gonna be And so comes the robot bird, named Steam Chuck, in which is a very powerful opponent. His attacks right now just consist of slashing and snapping at its enemies. Certainly more threatening than an ordinary Galliform. As for its defense, not a single health bar is phased when it is hit. Its main weak point is in the glowing orange core of its body, guarded by a shield of metal. The more the shield is damaged, the more it starts to break. It may take a long process, but I could bear with this in consideration. It may be the only way to beat this. Now the giant robot bird has a new shield at its stomach. A new type of metal that forms a stronger layer than before. Adding to the difficulty it can now shoot missiles. And at one point, a salmon? Whoever built this forgot their snack. The fight is now more difficult. With how this new shield has to be shot by everyone at the same time. It may take a long process. But certainly able to end. Damn. For the love of God. This better be their last layer. Magmarin has returned, now in a more slim form. With his assistance the steam chuck may make itself destroyed. Although now it has one last ability now. It can now shoot lasers from its nostrils, and not to mention its stronger layer. The all strength that once seems out of the picture now. We may need to figure out how to destroy this remaining layer. Perhaps all heat at once. We gotta shoot all the hottest beams we can let forth. It's working. The flames. The lightning. The superheated blood. It's all melting the layer of metal. With the steam chuck scarred down we can finally put the bird down. And finally take back the artifact. The artifact of Karapusa. Once and for all. And with our last hits. Ravioli, ravioli, that Eugene bird. I think the facility has just started a self-destruct sequence. We need to have the artifact and drug like him. Sheesh, 
that was yours. So who has it? Uh, I do. Splendid. We can now finish up on returning the artifact. You are a brave soldier, Kloptica. I am impressed. I am glad I was able to help you guys. I hope to see this whole thing blow over. I shall be sending you guys to wherever you will be. Best of luck on your future endeavors, all four of you. Well, that was well and truly an interesting experience. I will be honest. I wasn't expecting the facility to blow up. Although perhaps that's a good thing. The moment of Kloptika mentioning me also. It was unexpected. But very nice. I feel even like I've done a massive portion of progress today. In my scuffles against the ice cockatoo assassical. And the mechanical rooster steam chook. I'm so close yet so far from finishing this mission. But for now I'm very tuckered up. I'll have to have some rest for a while. And take in everything that has happened so recently. So with that. For now. Phil Thompson. Signing off again. <laughs>